After years of government neglect and lack of maintenance, the reconstruction of Puerto Rico's electric system could take more than a decade to fix. Our Christian Ramos has the story. After weeks of continuous interruptions in Puerto Rico's electrical system, Wayne Stensby, CEO of Luma Energy, assured that it will take more than a decade to renovate and stabilize the local electric grid. The company entered to the market in June after being selected by the government to operate and repair the island's energy distribution system. Then be assured that Puerto Rico has the worst electric system in all North America and explain that after long years of neglect and poor maintenance, the reparation will require a significant amount of money and a multimillionaire investment. The island has been dealing for the last weeks with constant load shedding events that have thousands of households without energy service. Therefore, Luma CEO said that the service is going to improve year after year and that interruptions to the system are going to gradually decrease. Recently, while all of this is happening, the company asked the Puerto Rico's Energy Bureau for a rate increase of more than 16% that hasn't been approved yet. Currently, the energy cost per kilowatt hour is 21 cents, but it will rise to 28.87 cents if the petition is approved. Reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Cristian Ramos. All right, thanks, Christian. Well, the Coast Guard says it intercepted 260 Haitian migrants this past week. Now, one group of 77 people was found Friday morning, about 20 miles just south of Cuba. Wednesday, another 183 people were found on a 55-foot sail freighter off the coast of Cap de Mole, Haiti. Both groups were returned to Haiti by the Coast Guard. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The Coast Guard says both vessels were destroyed due to hazard of navigation. The Coast Guard has routinely returns people found at sea aboard unseaworthy vessels to their country of origin to prevent the loss of life at sea. In the meantime, the Belize government is one step closer to constitutional reform. The Prime Minister said a constitutional reform commission will be established by the end of next month. The members will serve for one year. Calls have been made for such a commission as the government embarked on taking constitutional amendments to the House of Assembly. The opposition had been asking the administration to hold off on any more amendments to the Constitution until there is a comprehensive review of the existing laws. I'm announcing our government's decision to appoint a constitutional reform commission to undertake a comprehensive review of the Constitution, engage in national consultations, and make specific recommendations to the Ministry of Constitutional Reform for any changes deemed necessary. And I take the opportunity to invite the leader of the opposition to join us when we send you a letter to join this commission. This commission shall be appointed on or before the 31st of October and have a one-year term of office. Now, the Prime Minister said that ending corruption was not just a slogan for his government, which came to office in March of this year. It is a demand we have heard loud and clear from the Belizean people across the length and breadth of our nation. It is, too, a requirement for the successful growth and development of Belize. It is the foundation of our social justice agenda aimed at addressing poverty. We will make government more accountable and transparent by reforming the oversight structures and reviewing the Belize Constitution to ensure that it meets the needs and aspirations of the Belizean people. And turning now to the U.S. mainland, the rate of new COVID-19 cases reported in the U.S. appears to be slowing down, but many hospitals remain packed. And a new analysis shows treating COVID patients comes with a hefty price tag. Our One Caribbean News' Emily Matson gives us a breakdown of all those numbers. The cost of COVID. In hospitals across the U.S., more than a quarter of all ICU beds in use are for COVID-19 patients. The amount of, of people in the ICU that we're seeing in this wave is quite frankly as really high. It's something that is very astonishing how quickly people have gotten sick and ended up in the ICU. The organization Fair Health analyzed insurance claims and found the average bill for COVID-19 hospitalization is about $75,000. Add more serious hospitalizations like those which require the use of ventilators or days in the ICU can cost more than $300,000 on average. 
After price negotiations, the average allowed amount actually paid by patients and in-network insurance providers is more than $33,000 for a general COVID-19 hospitalization and about $98,000 for a more complex hospitalization. Those most at risk of being admitted to the hospital for COVID-19, people who are unvaccinated. Right now, the pace of initial COVID-19 vaccinations is the slowest it's been in two months. We do need to get these vaccination rates up higher if we want to create a backstop against the kind of spread that we've seen this past summer. While national daily cases of COVID-19 have inched downward for more than a week now, the overall surge driven by the Delta variant isn't done and experts worry cases may still spike with colder weather in the mainland. Emily Matson, One Caribbean News. Now, according to the Fair Health Analysis, treatment for COVID-19 that does not result in hospitalization, including lab work, radiology, and cardiography procedures, could cost non-insured patients an average of more than $2,500. For insured patients who are treated in network, the average total cost to insurance and the patient is about $1,000.